you want to introduce this one? Well, I think you've always started. Hi, right. I'm Kim. Oh, sorry, I'm Gavin. Um, and welcome to Me part again. four. Four? Of the Big C series. Hopefully it's four. Yep, so uh, Kim wants to talk about uh, what happened or oh, at the end of chemo because we kind of like finished a bit early yeah so um anyway move so, on so yeah so doing taxol having herceptin every three weeks near the end um near the end now there was supposed to be 12 sessions of taxol um but I they check every week to see how you're going you're still having blood tests done yep um still and, having um, the heart but i started thing. to get a bit of numbness in my fingers and across my toes you did, you did. um i yeah. brought that to my oncologist's attention because Taxol can cause um, destroy the nerves at is the it end neuro of neuro uh, neuralgia. No neuropathy or whatever. Oh, neuropathy. Can't remember. Oh, we'll put the like we'll that. put the word down the bottom. Yeah, it's because it can actually destroy um, nerve endings. Yeah. So she said, right, we'll see how we go. Well, the next week it was a bit worse. I think that was on week eleven, and she said, right, well you've done twelve. She said you've done eleven. Yep. So we're going to stop it now because it, it, we didn't want to lead to yeah. any permanent And she said damage. most people don't get to even 11 yeah, because so, of the nerve Because things might thing. start to happen, you know. But that's why they keep an eye on you and they check on you every week. Yep. So, you know, up until then, amazing, you know, the whole time. The, the care yep. was amazing, um, you know, where you actually... I don't know, you just, you don't look forward to going to chemo, but it's not a frightening experience yeah, at all. It, it wasn't. I did not have any pain, like I said, if I felt nauseous tablets if yeah. you're tired you sleep um and um but you know don't be frightened of chemotherapy it doesn't hurt you know yeah. it's um you can get it, it's just it. scary at the start exactly That's all. you know because it's because of everything Unexpected. we see on the news you don't know. That's yeah. right yeah so um so anyway so it finished um finished taxol but obviously we're still having to go every three weeks to the hospital to have the aseptin done yeah for the, um, for the full 12 months so back to the surgeon's office because obviously i was due to go and then have my other surgery done to do that clearance again because the last margin was still not clear yeah, um to so get rid the 10th of, of june potential cancer Amy's cells birthday yep um i was back in for another surgery so you know by then the surgery theater room has become like my second home um, the, the surgeon's coming out and saying, oh gosh, here's trouble again. Talking about me like I'm trouble. I'm not. I'm, yeah, yeah, you're so, wonderful. Um, and then obviously <laughs> the lovely um, anaesthetist. Um, so yeah, they wheel me back in there again, put me out, do the clearance, back into the surgeon's office a week later. Yep, said all healing Finally, well. Finally, good news, there was, the margin was, was clear. clear. Yep. Thank goodness. Um, so that was great news. So... So that was all done. So obviously, as I said, still having a septum every three weeks for a year. Yeah. Um, so, um, so the next thing I had to do was um, had to have an appointment to go and see the radiologist. Yeah. Um, so went and had an appointment with her, and that was in the next hospital. And uh, what was her name? Her name was. So her what, name was Louise. Was her, her name was Louise. Right. Yeah. Yes. Her name was Louise. She, she was. She was a lovely lady. So Gavin came into that appointment. So. Couldn't she, go to any others. No, that's right. <laughs> so, well, that was the last one. Yeah. So um, so basically, um, they explained that I'd have to go and have a planning session done. Um, so I think it was on a CT scanner. So, so hang on. Shall we? Sorry. I'll, we'll stop there for a second. Oh, right. Right. So radiotherapy, what's it for? Right. So radio, yeah, because we haven't explained any of that. No. So radiotherapy, would you, you, go on, you can do yeah. a bit of talking. So radiotherapy is uh, a strong x-ray machine, basically, and it's targeted to the massive tissue that had the cancer cells in them. And it's, and it's supposed to destroy, using x-rays, the, the, any cancer cells that may the remain behind. Still, so yeah. they had to do it on your left breast. Um, and so then Kim had to go in for this session where they put tattoos on her. I know. I so got, over to I am, you, yeah, tattoo lady. I am covered lady. in little black dots because... Um, and the session, I think... And they're the, still there. The, yeah, they don't go. I asked them <laughs> if they could put little legs on them and turn them into little butterfly. No, they wouldn't do that. Um, so, um, but that planning session was probably for about an hour. It was a long session. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because what they do is they actually get you on the table and they basically put you in a position, arms up above the head. They have this um, big, massive pillow that they can put air in and, and suck the air out. And they basically mould it to your head and your shoulders um, so that every time you have a radiotherapy session, um, and I was going to have two and a half weeks worth, wasn't I? Well, well we were initially it was three, day. wasn't it? No, 15 it was days? Half, it was two and a half weeks. Wasn't it 15 days? 
Oh, maybe it was 15. Yeah, 15 yeah. days. 15 so days. So 15 days going every day except for the weekends. Yeah, so every um, weekday. And then basically yep. your little, it's like a little man suit hangs up on a coat hanger in the radiotherapy room. Um, and and it, a locker for your pillow. That's right. You? And they, eh? Locker for your pillow. Oh, you get, no, no, no. No, oh, yeah? just for your clothes. The locker is full. Oh. So yeah, your little, so it's all marked up. That's your little, um, your spongy, I don't know, what's it called? Oh, it's like a foam pillow. It's like a foam pillow. Like a, a memory. It's sort of, it molds to your body. Memory foam. Um, and then obviously they can just release the air out and then it gets used again for the next patient. So, but that stays with you in, that hangs up on the coat hanger and they actually have that on the table ready for you when you go in for your session. So, um, so it was basically to mold that. I had to keep going in and out of the machine because um, breast cancer, um, radiotherapy, is a little bit more dangerous on your left breast because that's your heart lays right underneath that section. Um, so I had to learn how to do what they call a deep breath hold mm. technique. Um, so basically um, they were putting me in and out of the machine and every time this is during the planning and I had to keep holding my breath each time because when you hold your breath, your lungs um, pop up, up yeah. and they cover over your heart. And that protects you while the beam is being administered to your breast each blast you get. Um, so basically, it was all about lining me up. So they have all these laser beams on the table, all these red lines, so that when they lay you on the table, they switch the machine on it and all the lasers come up and then they line your body up exactly. With a, with a tattoo, sir. It was the only time yeah. I was ever told never to lose any weight. Oh, which was great <laughs> because obviously if you lose weight during that then that can adjust the lineups and they're not targeted at the right place so such clever technology um you know they asked me what my favorite music was too um which was good um so i had my planning session the nurses were wonderful i think there was three nurses in there with me yeah. during that planning session you know you have to lose a bit of your dignity strip off your top half and you know, but quite frankly, mm. I think you get to the point where, you know, you just want to get treated and that's all that matters. Yeah. Um, so uh, basically... Oh, and yeah, one, one on. thing. Uh, if you have a mastectomy or choose to, or the mm. doctor recommends that and you lose one or both of your breasts, you don't need radiotherapy. No. Because it's only for the, if you're, if the breast is left, is still there. Um, that's the only reason yeah, you have radiotherapy. So, you know, and that was another, you know, yet again, another thing, you know, that I was frightened about because, mm, you know, I'd, I'd looked on, I'd looked online again. Of course you did. Because um, I wanted to see how these machines work, you know, and there was this big, massive arm that swings around your bottom. Oh, oh God. Um, I thought, you know, I've got no choice. I've got to do this. You know, I've just got to do it. Um, so anyway, so the um, radiotherapy started in um, July middle winter over here wasn't yeah, it yeah um and they give you what they do is they near the time that it's going to start they'll send you a whole list of times um and they usually vary anywhere between 10 and seven o'clock at night yeah. time so, so we try to choose the later so in the we day ask ones. for late appointments but so we i could up, work in the morning we ended and, up getting like yeah. 6 30 appointments at night didn't it was we pitch black at that pitch time dark in winter and then um obviously covid lockdowns right guys no one allowed in the building other than the patients so i thought i'm gonna have to do this all by myself yeah. without so, gavin so it was only i was the only wings. there i could only go in for about three sessions I don't think you came and you, any I, of those. Well, I couldn't go into no. the machine room. No. I had to sit in the foyer. Exactly. But, but um, then I couldn't even do that. I had to the sit whole in the building car. was locked down. There was nobody. It was pitch dark. The building's beautiful, Victorian building. And you, there was people um, as you walked in. Of course, you have to wear, you know, we forget that all the appointments after that and chemo, we were wearing masks all the time. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I'm walking into, I sign in at the reception desk and walk in across this massive big floor clip clock clip you know it was dark in there creepy they buzzer to go into the room um i used to be like the only person there used to be some older guys and i never saw any other women while i was in there they were all older guys mm. um bless them going through prostate cancer or radiotherapy test testicular cancer yeah so yeah. um you know there was me with my short hair and everything looking very much like the other guys with their short gray hair um and you basically went into the room um you went into a little changing room, stripped off um, everything on the top. Um, they give you a locker with your name on it, and that locker stays with you during the whole three weeks. We um, talked about that. Yeah, there's a yeah. Well, you jumped forward on that one. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, there's a dressing gown that you get to keep for the whole three weeks too. So your dressing gown is in the locker. It. Well, no, not during that time. All oh, right. 
No, because it's only <laughs> it's only your dressing gown. Oh right. Um, so you've you got your white, white dressing gown on. Then they call you in, um, and basically you're on that machine. By the time they line you up, it probably takes them about five minutes to line you up on the machine. Um, and you're probably only, I was probably only in there for about five to 10 minutes for each session. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't very long, Ma maximum 15 if that. Oh, yeah. um, the reason I ask you about music is, and I don't know whether well, they do it in all places, but you know, so I was listening to the Eurythmics and ELO and all sorts of great music while I was lying on the table, but the machine, I think, is it noisy? did... Um, because I, I never went in, so I don't yeah, know how noisy it, it was. It is anything. a massive machine because what is there's like a it's the petition comes across halfway through the room, and, and like the machine a, behind it is huge. So basically, all you've got is a big. So um, they can do the targeted beam. Yeah, you have a great big, huge stainless steel table that you lie on that moves backwards and forwards, and then there's this great big arm that basically just comes up around. Um, I think I was having blasts done be underneath the table that were obviously going through my chest from the back or the side um, but I side, think it was probably. like one two three there was like five different movements and then the machine would stop over my breast I then have to and then they'd say Kim take a deep breath so then you take and I was, they said it would only ever be for 20 seconds but I'm not kidding you I'm sure I was holding my breath for about five at no five hours no, it, five you know, minutes no, no. It, but I just got to the point where I counted I just counted, you know, one and two, but and at any stage you can't hold your breath and you release your breath and the machine automatically cuts off. So it can't cause you any damage at all. And then they say, right, okay, then Kim, let's give it another go. So you do deep breath and then the machine, you'd hear it go do, 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 or something like that. You could see the little red lights flashing inside and everything. And then, um, you know, it didn't come very close to me. I was not too claustrophobic with that one. It was only this one here that was a little bit close mm. and you know, I just counted because um, I thought to myself, hold your breath, girl. As soon as you hold your breath, the sooner you're out of here. So, um, and then basically they yeah. come in, thank you, off you go, and then see you tomorrow. So, yeah. you know, and so then... So were, were there any side effects? I can't remember with the no, radio therapy. No, not at all. Sometimes you can get a bit of burning. Your breast oh, can go right. a bit red. Yes, like sunburn. Yeah, um, but they give you creams for everything like that, but they check you over and make sure that you're okay. But, you know, I was lucky I didn't have any burns or yeah. anything. So, like, it's a very sort so of you, mild sunburn. So you did the get. 15 sessions. Yeah, I did yeah, all 15 right. of those. Yep. I drove to Ballarat every day from yeah. Melton, there and back. Um, yeah, so we Monday clocked, to Friday. We clicked up some kilometres. Oh, yeah, I tell and we you. drove home in the snow one night. It was so cold oh, up in the mountains. God. It, it was, was snowing. snowing. It was incredible. Um, but yeah, so you have a final check at the end of your time um, with the uh, radiotherapist and um, the doctor. I think, yeah, the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To see how everything went and if you were happy. And then I think they did another follow up with me probably about a month later. And I have another appointment with her, I think, in February next year, a year. After, after this, yeah. Yeah, to see how I'm feeling and everything. So radiotherapy was a breeze, you know. Compared to the yeah, chemo. Yeah, so, you know, the whole experience was, you know, yeah. it's it's done now. So, um, But you were still on Herceptin until when? January. They got to ring the bell. Yeah. There's a little, I don't know, a lot, some of the, not all of them do it now, but when you finish treatment, there's like a bell on the wall. And it's some sort of, I don't know where the, the story comes from. I think but, it was a Navy Admiral in the US. Yeah. When he finished chemo, he donated a bell to the hospital. Yeah. So and when they ring it, it means you're you finished. Your, your treatment's, treatment's all finished. finished. And usually there might be a load of people waiting in the waiting room for their treatment because of COVID. They'd obviously split a lot of the sessions over a longer period. So the staff weren't. There was a like a skeleton staff constantly yeah, working. Yeah. Um, so I had the bell. I rang the bell just for the and nurse. And there was nobody there. Nobody the there. No. I have got a photograph of that. Have you? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. We'll put it up then. So um, with my short hair. Nice. Um, but yes, you know, it was um, it was emotional to yeah. think that. Gosh, and I got I think I got back in the car at the end of that day, and, and we had another cry, didn't we? To say we've, yeah, we've done it. Yeah. Thank goodness we've done all we've the treatment. It. So, all the um, treatment. Yeah. Mm. No, it wasn't all the treatment. Because you no, had still had a, the Herceptin. It was the end of the, yeah, it was the, end of end the of radiotherapy. radiotherapy. Yeah. We were still doing the Herceptin, but that was, you know, there was no problems with mm -hmm. that at all. Um, so basically the Herceptin carried on um, towards the end of, um, I think, probably 11 month mark. Mm -hmm. I started to get rashes on my face, yeah. really bad, like itching. My face was so sore and a lot of my friends and family will know you know, how Gavin managed to look at me every day. I've got some photographs, so I don't mind. 
Um, All right. They don't know whether that was related to the Septin, the Herceptin, um, my Because they'd never, she'd never seen no. it before. Um, but I went and saw um, a, a skin it? dermatologist. Yeah. Um, she said it was something to do with allergies, but as soon as I stopped the Herceptin, within a month, my face cleared up. So, yeah, and hasn't come back since? No, no. So, you know, we think that maybe, you know, when you're getting masses of, you know, a drug pumped into your body every three weeks, it's going to come out something. of you somehow. So. Yeah. But we know, so we don't know whether that was the reason for it. But I did stop. I think Herceptin got stopped a month before. So I did 11 months, didn't I, Herceptin? Yeah, yeah. What um, was the reason we finished early? Well, because of the fact I was getting the rashes, Oh, right, yes, yes. Um, and she wanted to stop. So, you know, I had my final heart scan and my heart was okay. There was yep, no so damage. so there was no degradation at all. Um, so, yeah, so... The only other thing I had to do, basically, was I had to keep going and getting my port flushed. Um, uh, they have to keep the line um, clear. Yeah. Um, so I had to go and get my port flushed every, what, 10 to 12 weeks. Yeah. Um, and then um, I had to have another mammogram done in July this year, an ultrasound. Yes. Um, they don't take the port out until that all came back clear. Until they get an clear. all clear type That thing. was fine. Um, and then I was rescheduled... Um, yeah, again, surgery got cancelled, um, but I think I was back in at the end of September this year and I had my port removed. Yeah. Um, and so that was 2021. It. Yeah, the port was so removed. So the whole thing went from August-ish 2019 yep. to September 2021. So yep. it's two whole years. Definitely. So. Of our lives. Yeah, can I go back two years of age, back to 54 again? Why? Because you well, lost two well, years. We, everybody all lost two years, didn't we, of with COVID. COVID. But yeah, yours was going to, you were going to so, lose it regardless. But you know, it was... But you didn't it, lose it, 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 it was, we still lived. You know, so. We were lucky because none of my chemo sessions got cancelled and I know a lot in England, people had their chemo cancelled mm. due to COVID. Um, it was difficult because they mm. would not let Gavin in the building no. um, for my not chemo sessions. Not because I was sessions. unclean, no. it's just they didn't want to risk it. So I had to sit in the chair by myself. And did you did. to Gavin a couple of times out the window. Yeah, yeah, we just got a window seat. And I could, um, you I know, so I had to become, you know, you had to become brave and during and also had surgeries. Gavin was not allowed to come in the hospital with me to even sit by my bed for surgery. So I had to be yeah. even more braver going into hospital by myself, booking me in for surgery getting Will down to the theatre, coming back out of recovery, still no Gavin there, but I was just yeah. constantly ringing him. Um, so, well, you know, I got through. I got through the surgery. You know, I thought mm. at the end of the day, I've made myself think, right, I don't have to be fearful of surgeries anymore. Um, and there's obviously other stories to come in the future regarding surgeries. Um, you know, and I thought, I can do anything. I can If I can get through this, then I can get through anything. But, yeah. um, you know, but... Hence the videos. Exactly. You know. <laughs> so anyway, so I think we'll wrap that one up there too, and then we'll just finish off yeah. the end. Yeah, an end bit. Yeah. All right, well, that was the end of part four. We'll see you in part five, which is the last part of the the Big C series. So I'm Gavin. I'm Kim. And we'll, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye-bye.